Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Dorothy J. Stubblebein. She is the owner of DJS Associates, and she is here to share with us her experiences traveling from corporate America to entrepreneurship. Welcome, Dorothy. How are you today? I'm well, thank good, you. Good. And Dorothy, I may have misspoke in terms of the name of your business, so would you correct me? Oh, DJS Associates. DJS you were right. Associates. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Sometimes I get a little yeah. nervous in front of the camera. So, Dorothy, welcome and thank, thank you. you for joining me on the show. It's a pleasure. You know, as entrepreneurs, it's really interesting how paths cross. We were both um, sort of in the running to work with uh, an organization and met each other at some preparation meetings. And now here we are through LinkedIn connected and on the studio. Yeah. So totally cool how life kind of comes <laughs> full circle. Yes, yes. Yeah. And people come in and out of your life. In and out mm -hmm. of your life. That's right. Well, Dorothy, I mentioned that um, you originally spent some time in corporate America, and I'd love for you to share with our listeners kind of what was corporate America like for you? Um, because you have an unusual experience these days in being with one employer for an extended period of time. Yes, yes. that's true. I was with uh, Wyeth um, in New Jersey mm -hmm. uh, for almost 20 years, which wow. is almost unheard of today. Right. And I know when I started out my HR career, when we would review resumes, and we'd look at somebody who we thought were job hoppers, and we wouldn't consider them. Mm -hmm. But today, that's the standard. Right. People leave uh, frequently, or three, every three or four years or so. Right. Not everyone, but, mm -hmm. but many people. Mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, you, you really have to change with the times. Right. And hopefully I did that. Right. Well, in... Wyeth in New Jersey, um, and I know there was a presence of Wyeth in the Philadelphia area yes, as well. Yes, right near here. <laughs> um, what was your role? I was VP of HR for mm -hmm. the generic division, mm -hmm. and it was in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and we had over a thousand people, mm -hmm. and I was here frequently in Radnor uh, to uh, work at the corporate office or work on projects or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was a very interesting time, mm -hmm. uh, very um, old boy network kind of uh, mm -hmm. company. And I didn't realize at the time I didn't have a whole lot of um, chance to really show what I could do. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Was it just that work was so busy or? No, I think it was that uh, there were so many um, like the FDA came in and monitored everything mm -hmm. we did. We in Cherry Hill manufactured generic injectable drugs. Oh. So it was very, very uh, important that we follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And so I think that extended to other departments. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't realize it at, at the time until I went out on my own. Mm -hmm. um, when they were going to sell my division, Oh. Um, yes. <laughs> I had a chance to take a package and I talked it over with my family. Mm -hmm. And after a weekend of talking about it, um, I made the tough decision to mm -hmm. go out on my own mm -hmm. rather than look for another job in corporate America. Oh, okay. So I developed a program. I do a lot of HR consulting. Mm -hmm. I do strategic planning and that's where I bring partners in a lot. Mm -hmm. And mostly executive coaching which is where we met. Right. Yes. Right. I, I find that is is really my passion. Mm -hmm. How, why so, Dorothy? Why executive coaching? Because I, I hear executives can be kind of tough. <laughs> yes. And not necessarily <laughs> coachable. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I think um, I, I have a passion for it because I think I do it well. Mm -hmm. And I don't always like to pat myself on the back, but mm -hmm. Uh, when I was a kid, and I had a lot of friends, they'd always call me for advice. Ah. And my mother would call me Dear Abby. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and it's similar, but not the same. Right. Same church, different pews, mm -hmm. kind of. Right. And so with the coaching aspect, I think you have to make the person uh, your friend first and get them mm -hmm. to really trust you. Mm -hmm. And then you mm -hmm. can work on developmental issues. Mm -hmm. Right. Trust is such an important part oh boy. Of, of personal interaction. And even going back to when you talked about Wyeth, culture 
is sort of the company trust factor. It, sort of, it, it lets people know what the norms are and how to behave and what's okay and yes. where you're going to get zapped. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in one-on-one -on -one interactions, that's true as well. Absolutely, absolutely. In When you're working with executives, are there certain things that you do that make your business um, maybe a little bit different than other business, other executive coaching businesses? Hmm, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure that I'm different. Mm -hmm. I think um, because I've had 30 years of business experience mm -hmm. and because I was trained by a couple of the different agencies that do this, mm -hmm. um, I think I have a great background mm -hmm. to coach people. Mm -hmm. And because I can be trusted. I've done a lot mm -hmm. of work on trust and some uh, presentations around the area at the Wharton Alumni Club. A partner mm. and I did a, mm. a presentation on the speed of trust by Stephen M. R. Oh, Covey. Oh, yes. And that's a wonderful book. That's a great book. Yes, it's a good read and mm -hmm. a lot of business books I just keep from my library, but this one was readable mm -hmm. and really relatable to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's just, uh, that can't be overemphasized, mm -hmm. that trust factor. The speed of trust. In fact, yes. that may not be a book that some of our viewers viewers have read. Can you give us sort of a 30 second highlight of why they might want to read that book and maybe one takeaway from the speed of trust? Well, I think that we all have blind spots. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that in this book, Stephen M. R. Covey, who is the son of the original Stephen Covey. Mm -hmm. um, Seven and Habits. I, yes. Seven Habits, Stephen Covey. <laughs> yes. Right. Oh boy, yes. <laughs> And uh, I, I think people don't really realize what goes into um, being trusted. I go mm -hmm. into a lot of companies and I see the president who is in his own space or her own space mm -hmm. and they don't relate well uh, for a number of reasons and I mm -hmm. think the trust factor is a big component of that. Mm -hmm. um, what I have seen, I worked for a company in New Jersey that tries to keep companies in New Jersey mm -hmm. and so they find state grants for them and oh, they do cool. lean training and they do management training. Okay. And I went around to at least 15 companies mm -hmm. and smaller companies mm -hmm. and I learned a lot about human nature because the presidents of those companies just did what they wanted to do mm -hmm. and a lot of times they didn't see how they linked with the uh, management staff, with the people, and a big component was trust. Mm -hmm. And when I went into each company, I would do that presentation first before oh, I gave them any management topics. Okay, okay. And I found it very interesting because people wanted to talk, mm. and they wanted to talk about why it was so important to trust. Mm. And to look at, and, and, and your question about the book, as people watch your feet, not what you say, but how you walk the talk. Right. And right. I think that that's, the, that's a key component of trust. Actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, wow. indeed. Well, that, you know, you've identified your competitive advantage. It's the 30 years of corporate experience. Mm -hmm. It's the 16 years, you know, the 20 years corporate experience, the 16 years of running your own business, um, the focus on trust, um, and the ability for you to partner with other organizations to really highlight that trust and bring it into your executive coaching. You're clearly passionate yes. <laughs> um, about this. What do you see in terms of the, I'll call it the intersection of trust and leadership? And, and how, how do some of the younger entrepreneurs, I, I just interviewed a young entrepreneur, how do they begin to become aware of this and navigate trust and leadership effectively? Well, that's a great question. And I think that what happens is that those of us who've been around a while mm -hmm. need to realize that we need to mentor younger people mm -hmm. and bring them up um, through their, their trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. And there are many organizations. I'm a member of GPSEG, which is oh, the Greater yes. Philadelphia Senior yes. Executives Group. I was served mm -hmm. on their board and whatnot. And almost every group that I am in has a mentoring program. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so key because mm -hmm. we didn't get to where we are by ourselves. That's right. And I think mm -hmm. that is a key component of remembering that when you were uh, have a little bit of years on you right. and then you can reach back and help someone. There's sometimes a younger person who is um, 
just not aware of maybe one or two things that they mm -hmm. should be doing right. um, that they're not. And so that kind of mentoring a younger person is so key for mm -hmm. all of us, I think, and mm -hmm. that have been around for a little while. Right, and right. And to keep the, the economy going, to keep <laughs> the businesses going, I think is really key. Right. Well, I know you brought something with you, and you also have a quote. I'm not sure what's the best segue. So given what you just shared, what's, yes. what's the best segue? Well, I, you asked me to bring a, something that mm -hmm. represents my business, and it was mm -hmm. either a crayon or, or a highlighter because okay. um, one of the coaching clients I had rode up on his motorcycle, dressed really terribly, and... Um, as we worked along during the time, I just showed him that I believed in him. Mm. And mm -hmm. he started to dress less, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to categorize it, <laughs> <laughs> but he started to dress more like a business person. Okay. Okay. And at the end, he sent me the nicest note, and he said to me, color me a success. Oh, wow. Wasn't that oh, nice? That sounds like a title yes. of a book. Yes. <laughs> Color me as it says. So I always remember that. I always think of a wow. crayon or a highlighter in that. Oh, that's so powerful. But, yes, the it personal is. personal impact that yes. you have mm -hmm. on people's mindset and it, behaviors. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. And then another thing, I read a lot of... Um, business man, like Harvard Business Review, or I get some books. I don't always read them all, but I, you know, make sure I skim them a little bit. Rosabeth Moss Cantor is yes. from Harvard Business School, mm -hmm. and she comes out with some things sometimes that really make you think. Mm -hmm. And one mm -hmm. thing that I have on my desk that I look at every day is six success secrets that mm -hmm. she came up with. Show up, speak up, mm -hmm. team up, don't give up, lift others up, and look up. Mm. And I think all of it is important. And it's not always all of them are important every day, right. but there might be one right. that sticks out to you. Like sometimes if you're feeling pretty down, maybe you lost a client or something mm. happened, mm -hmm. look up. Look because up. Because things okay. get better. Right, right. Yes. Would you repeat them again? I'm yes. sure there's some people going, oh, oh wait a minute, I missed that. <laughs> yes, okay, so. and you can look it up. Rose Beth sure. Moth's Cantor is wonderful. She's, right. she's so, so um, innovative mm -hmm. and very bright. Show up. Show up. Speak up. Speak up. Team up. Team up. Mm. Don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. Lift others up. And there's the what? mentoring. Ah, yes. And look up. Ah, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Dorothy, it's been a pleasure oh, having you on the you. show. Would you share with our audience how people can get in touch with you? Yes. Uh, I have a LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. and people can contact me through LinkedIn, okay. which would be great. Mm -hmm. And as a coach, as a speaker, you're involved in your profession um, through SHRM. Can you tell folks just a little bit about SHRM and why, as a entrepreneur, belonging to an industry association is, is still important. Yeah, I, I think it is. I know when I first uh, graduated from college and I joined a group because I was the only HR person in this mm -hmm. small company. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, what I found was listening at the dinner table of eight or 10 people were uh, topics, different topics. Well, mm -hmm. how do you do this? Mm -hmm. What did you do about that? And I have a, a ah. tough employee and this in the, and I, uh, for the first couple of years, I learned so much from other people. Mm -hmm. um, the book learning was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I did good in, I, you know, did very well in college. But this was real life. Mm -hmm. And so I think people need to really join, not only to get, but to give. Mm. Well, Dorothy, I think that's so reflective of what you're all about. Um, coaching, mentoring, leadership, trust. Thank you so much for being on the well, show. Thank you for it's having been me. a pleasure. Yes, it's been yes, a pleasure been. to see you again. Thank you. So there you have it, significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, like Dorothy J. Stubblebein of DJS Associates. Join us next time as we continue to listen and learn from entrepreneurs in the greater Philadelphia area.